Good morning, everybody. I am Paola, and today I think we're going to do some experiment with the luster and also with the scratch technique. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to go through some of the um, uh, material so then you can get familiar. So we have the lusters, uh, which everybody probably knows, and we can see how we will use it when we do the flow technique. And then we actually have regular paint, which I usually use a closed medium. I don't paint with open medium, so it's always closed medium and turpentine. And then I will actually have some water medium also that I use for the scratch technique. And I think most of the other products should be something that everybody's familiar with, like red resist versus lavender and so forth. But if you have any question, we can go through the material maybe more in detail at the end. So the way that I start, I actually start with the drawing and I hope everybody can see it. It's, uh, it's just a simple, um, a simple drawing with, uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a tracing paper. So then I can actually position it correctly. And I usually use, you can use any type of reproduction method. I usually use a simple carbon paper and I will bring the, uh, my drawing on, on the, the object that I'm going to design. The original, the original paperwork was designed for a, an oval box, but I was able to find some plates that are easier to see maybe. And so I did the example on the on the on the oval on the plate. So I once I copy with the carbon paper my drawing, I actually do a very fine outlining. And in this case, I already started to use some red resist, so then we can shorten the drying time. But you can actually see the uh, the drawing and the outlining. The outlining has to be extremely fine, thin, because this downlining is heavy, it will actually um, um, overwhelm the, 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 the final look of the, of the painting. So you want it to keep it as thin as possible. Usually I use two different colors for the outlining. I use black if I wanted the outlining to come through each of the firing and be very dominant in, my, in, the, in the painting. Or I usually use a light gray if I wanted just to use it as a tracing element through the different firing. And uh, usually the, the light gray will actually disappear as we put layer and layer of color and it would just be a guideline through for you. Okay, so once so this plate has been fired already once, so then we have our outlining that is pretty permanent. In order to do the, the luster, which we will be doing right away now, we actually have to delimit the area that we will do, we will luster. So this is done with red resist, and in this case, you will see that what we will do, we are um, uh, we do a, the we are applying the luster to the background of the moth. Can be a butterfly of the moth, and on on the wing of the of the moth. So everybody, I'm pretty sure, is familiar with the resist process. But I did some of them, so then we don't have to wait for the drying time. And I can see you can we can complete the some of them, some of the part. <clears throat> In order to generate a little motion on the moth, I usually do two layers of, of uh, lusters. The first layer is general, but without some of the areas of the wings. So for example, I would say, oh, I wanted this wing, this part of the wings be lighter. In this case, so in this way, you generate some motion because not the, the moth will not be one layer only flat, but it will have an additional layer of luster. And where we are actually putting the, <clears throat> the end resist now, we have lay, less layer of luster for so forth, you will be generating different layer, layer of depth in the color of the luster itself. So you can do more, many of these, as many as you want, okay, to generate diversity. Okay. Okay. And then once you apply your luster, I don't want it to go 
too long, so then we don't have to wait longer. But you can generate more of that. You always dry, and I have, a, sorry, I will be very noisy right now. We have an, a, an air dryer to do that. So then, Okay, so the luster is not completely dried. You can use your finger to verify that. And if nothing comes up on your finger, it means that it's actually totally dry and ready to actually be uh, the base for our luster. It's not dry completely, but we can wait for a second. Meanwhile, we can do the luster. When we apply the luster, I usually don't like to, put, to use the brush be, except for the mother of pearl, because the luster has a, a tendency to actually hold on the brush strokes. So if you want to have a, a very uniform look of the luster, the, there are two ways to do that. Either you do the flow technique, which the one that we use today, and is something that I learned from uh, Peter Faust in Switzerland, or you can actually hair brush the lusters. So this way you will actually have a, an homogeneous look and, and it will be uh, without the, the brush stroke in, in, inside the, to the drawing. So to do the, the flow technique, we have, for example, in this case, we wanted to mix two lusters. We can, we wanted to, you can do with a single luster, but sometimes it's two lusters are generating a better effect. So usually what I do, I use the two lusters that are compatible uh, color-wise. Like for example, in this case, we'll use a pink and, oops, a light green, okay? On one side, you put the one color, like for example, we say, oh, this is my light green. Okay, so I will put some drops of the green luster here. And this side is my pink side. So I will put some, some drops of the luster here. And then we will actually use thinner to actually make this, this uh, luster very fluid. And it's called flow technique because you will actually use the changing of the shape of the position of the plate to make sure that one luster flows and it flows into the other luster so there is not a right line between the pink and the green. So I think it's more complicated just to explain it than actually showing because it's very easy. Now I see that all my red resist is dry. I think so. And this is the way. In order to make the flow, we need to thin the luster. And to thin the luster, you have different options. You can use luster thinner, you can use turpentine, you can use a whole, um, thinner for gold. Uh, any, any type of, of, of thinner will actually work. And I, I found that the only difference is that the drying time, some dry faster and some dry a little slower than others. So in our case, we are open the two Lusters, okay, lusters, sorry. And what we do, we put the luster, remember the luster needs to be applied in very, very thin. As soon as you actually have a very um, um, heavy coat of the luster, the luster are just burning during the fire and it's a very difficult to bring them back. So you really want a very thin layer. Even if it seems some transparent, it's better eventually apply a second layer of luster than have them to chipping off during the fire. Okay, so usually put a couple of drops here. Oh, you can see, it's hopefully it's coming. Okay, and a couple of drops here. Very, lots of drops. Okay, so you can see that we have green and pink. So what we do now, we actually had thinner, and you can see that it's very thin. And I usually start mixing the, <clears throat> the luster with the thinner. Use different fingers, so then they don't mix at the beginning. And then you can see that they are very, once they have, they are very, very liquid and very thin, then I will start floating them. And you have a sort of control when you are floating them, like here, for example, you can say, oh, I want the pink to go more toward the green. And then you can say, oh, I want it to come back. And there will be a lot of them that goes somewhere else that you have to pick it up. And sometimes you might need 
some guidance with your fingers. Okay, mainly you want a very, 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 very thin, thin, thin layer. And then it's a lot of cleaning. So that's why I like to put a lot of red resist because more red resist you put, the less you have to clean. And I'm not very good at that. <clears throat> so the, when you when you go, uh, it's you can see that the color of the laser are very similar, all of them. So it's very hard to understand where you have the green or where you have the pink. With time, you will actually uh, actually have more. We will become more comfortable in driving your luster. So you can say, oh, I want this pink area or want this green area. But it's always um, a very nice surprise when you open the kiln and see where one luster went versus the other luster. So there is no concept of being extremely precise with this luster. So once a day you put there before doing anything else, the best thing will be that you actually um, use your air dryer to dry the luster again. With the air dryer, there are different things that you can do. Sorry, I'm just moving my luster away so they don't get. Okay, so when you do that with, with air dryer, depending on how far you're going with your air dryer, uh, you can still move the luster with the, with the hair flow. So if you go very close, if you go very close, you will see that the luster is uh, is actually making a little waves because the air is pulling the luster away until it actually is completely dry. If you want it just to dry and, and keep the, the look as, as you actually just did it, you just have to remember to keep the your, your drying, um, the hair dryer very far away. So then the, the air flow that reaches the luster is very minimal and it won't change the way that the luster looks, okay? So once the, the luster is very dry, which, okay, simply I use a, a, my tweezers and I will pull the, the luster away, okay? So in this case, but sorry, just uh, see that in this case, you have area where they are white, okay? And the whole body of my, also, on my mod is actually completely white. And I use acetone because it's fast drying and it doesn't go anywhere to actually clean the area that where the luster spilled all over the places. Okay. And here is a, is a, and this is, here is your mod. Okay. Removing some of the, some of the resist. Okay. Okay. So, okay, and this is where the luster is. And you can see it's all one color, but we know that there is some pink and there is some, and there is some green inside, okay? So the next time before we actually go to fire, we actually can do a lot of other things in the same, in the same uh, time. So we can actually start painting the moth and we can start painting the, uh, the, the, the gemstone, okay? For the gemstone, Okay, so for the mod and the gesso, we just have to prepare colors. So in our case, we have yellow, yellow, gray, and purple. And these are the three colors that we're going to prepare today. Uh, like I said, I use, uh, I try to be fast. Um, I use um, a closed medium uh, because that's the way that I learned to paint a porcelain. So I don't have, um, I can say, uh, I, I don't use uh, the open medium very often, but I'm pretty sure that you can do the same also with the open medium. The only difference that I notice if you use the open medium in that the open medium, because it's not drying, he has the tendency of run. So in this case, before I will do the, if I use the open medium, before doing the body of the mod, I will actually fire the last step. Because as soon as you paint with the open medium, the open medium will actually run into the last because it's not a closed medium and it is not drying right away. Okay, that it will be the only difference. So I think by using the open medium, it will require a little bit more firing than with a closed medium. And uh, we can go to that maybe later. So I use my open medium. Uh, 
and they just mix quickly. So hopefully, I just give an example and then we can go to the next layer, okay? Usually has more, more patience and more or, organized than today, but just to forgive me today. Okay. I like to keep the column not too not too fat because I think it's um, there's less risk of chipping off during the firing. Um, Yes, the answer is yes. I saw the question is, can I use fat, more, fat oil as closed medium? Yes. Um, closed medium, it, uh, the fat oil is actually the original all fat um, closed medium. Uh, you can use copaiba. I believe the one they use is a mix of copaiba and lavender and clove oil just to keep it open. But yes, you can use uh, fat oil is a good closed medium. Okay. And I, I have my turpentine that's right here and my brushes. I always clean my brush before starting and then you can actually paint your gem, gem. I think I hopefully, your, the inside of your gemstone. Okay. All of them. And I usually do a flat color, so I try not to shade them. Although I know that we like to do the shading, but with a flat, with a closed medium, I prefer to do a flat color. And then in the next firing, because we will have to do firing anyway, in the next firing to go back and actually put some uh, shading, okay? Okay. Okay, the same will happen on this side, which I don't think we, okay. And then the same idea. And if you don't have to follow the, the rule, you can just do as you prefer, the color wise, because it's not really a real mode, a real, real a realistic mode anyway. So you can create, I wanted to do this purple. I wanted to do this purple. Okay, and so until the mod is completely painted. Okay. Nine of gray. Nine of gray. And so forth. Okay. Um, and you can paint, you can paint the whole mod. You can paint all the inside of your gemstone on both sides and then and leave all this white and leave the, the wings, the last part as it is. The next thing you wanted to think about is that when you do this technique, you have to think about the different firing. Now, in this case, the next time we wanted to do the, the gold. And then in order to do the gold, we will have to actually already have done the little dots there in the gold. And so before, within this firing, what we can do, we can put the sizes and prepare our relief so that we can put them on the, on the, little, on the little gemstone. And for doing that, I have some of my powder, okay, my spatula, my ping of a flower. Okay, I put them here. And I usually like to use, uh, mm, um, water medium because it dries faster than the other medium, the fat oil, but you can actually even use fat oil. There is no restriction. Uh, every time that I actually, I don't know if it's just an habit from all days, but every time that I do um, something that has relief, I don't fire right away. I let it sit one night. And the reason is because I like the, the, red resi the, resist, the relief, sorry, to um, to dry very well. And it seems that it has less opportunity of chipping off during the firing. 
but I don't know if that is something, I don't know if it's very scientific or it's just something that I I was in the habit. So I continue to do that, even if I don't have any uh, scientific background on the, on the reason. So with the little tool, I actually collect little dots and be very patient. I will put dots in each of my gemstone. One, two, three, four, um, and five. Doesn't matter how many. I can I try to keep it um, same distance. And also I wanted to say that the, the, um, the relief shrinks a little bit during the fire. So you don't want to make it this big, but you don't want it to make it transparent that you that they will completely disappear in the, during the firing, okay? So you can be a little big and, uh, and um, a little big, and then they will adjust a little bit during the fire. All of them very patiently, one, two, okay? Okay, you do it on both sides. Okay, you can do all of them. And then, like I said, I usually like to see it. Now, the, I cannot work anymore on this layer because the, the luster is fresh, the dots are fresh. The only thing is that, the only thing um, that I did is complete my moth. Uh, so the only thing I can do now is put them in the fire. Um, I can see the, I, I can, can you, uh, again, um, Suzanne, I don't see the whole question in the chat room. Sorry. Let's... Okay, we'll talk about it later. Okay, uh, so I cannot do anything anymore on this layer. So the best thing to do is fire the plate and see what's happening in my kiln. And this is what happened in the kiln. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see. We have the wings. We have the white space that we left in the wings, okay? And we have the full moth that we painted. And we have the pink inside the, the gemstone. And we have all the little dots that we put on top, okay? So what we wanted to do in this fire, <clears throat> in this fire, it, this fire is a long, is, uh, in this in this layer is the lay, is the longest that you you the to work on. So what we wanted to do in this fire is we wanted to complete the butterfly, uh, the moth. Okay, we wanted to start filling up the the gold on on my just gemstone, but I also wanted to start doing the drawing on the bottom that is about my um, the drawing of the with the scratch technique. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to do again. We have to put drag resist around my moth, okay, again. And I don't think right now we wanted to do along my moth. And at this point, when we do it, we don't we don't cover anymore the white spot in the wings. So then they will actually receive one layer of the resist, of the luster. And it will create a different shading, a, a little movement within the, the moth itself. Okay, so you can go on. Okay, now it will take a long time. Just imagine that I actually did the mod. Paper brush. Very precise. You go around. I'm not very precise here, but you will be when you do your mod. Okay. Okay. Here we go.
like I said, I'm not very precise here, but you will need to be precise on when you do your mod. So no white spot here. So then it's, the, it's very clean looking, okay? Remove some of the resist. And then again, we will have to dry this with our um, with our dryer, hair dryer, sorry. And sorry, we're getting very, very hair dryer. So it will be very noisy for a couple of seconds again. Let's assume that it's actually completely dry. I have a piece here that is not dry, but okay. So we repeat repeat the same operation that we did before. We go back to our green luster. We go back to our pink luster, okay, and to our tin. And we do another layer of the same with the same flow technique. Remember to put. Remember to to put the uh, green where we had green before, so then it's not too complicated to look. Okay. I also wanted to say that when you do the flow technique, you don't feel comfortable to use your finger. I will suggest that you can get this at the pharmacy. These are your regular uh, finger protector, and you can use these to actually massage your your luster, so then you don't have you don't get in contact with the with the luster itself, okay? Second, I think that I will suggest is that every time that you use the luster in this way and you drop it, it things, uh, maybe, make sure that you clean the bottle perfectly because otherwise you will not be able to actually reopen your the bottle on the luster because they will actually seal and dry, okay? Same idea here, okay? Green, okay. and then same idea. We put some thinner. We put some thinner. Okay. I usually start mixing one, one, one luster. Mixing the second luster. Okay, I start already, and then I will actually flow them. And you can see that they flow really nicely. And you just have to make sure that you cover, and you don't have any white spots. Okay, see, right now we see that you already covered everything very nicely. And you say you wanted to remove some of the luster, you just get them this way and you collect it. Because remember, the luster really needs to be very, very thin applied. Sometimes we think it's too thin, but it's never too thin. Okay? Okay, now that we have this, um, we usually, I usually dry before doing anything else. But since we don't have a lot of but time, um, I will actually remove the red resist so that we can proceed with the other area. Okay. Taking the red resist off. It was good, no accident. Okay. And then at this point, I will make sure that everything is clean. And I usually use acetone, like I said before, because it gives me a very uh, quick uh, cleaning and it dries without, without going to, uh, to actually uh, run into the, the color. The, okay, clean very, clean everything. Okay, if there is something that went under the, the red resist, that's when your Q-tip are good, and then you can clean and clear, 
clearly nicely there. Okay, so you want to make sure there is no no last left over in any other white space. To avoid the the fact that the la that the last runs under the red resist, you just need to put the red resist very 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 thick, which may require more time in drying, and that's why today we didn't go that round. I usually try to make it very 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 thick, so then there is no cleaning afterwards. But if you need cleaning, is not too bad. Okay. Okay. So here is. And in this case, it keeps coming out because it's not dry. Okay. Right, we'll clean at the end. Okay, so here is our moth where we had the second layer of luster. The body of the moth, it's finished because it only requires one layer of color. If you wanted to do more, you can actually do more because there is always time that you can change things. What we wanted to do now is to finish our uh, gemstone, okay? And also to start doing the, um, uh, the, scratch, the scratch technique. In this case, the sketch technique is only a part of, it's not completely the whole things. So what we wanted to do, for example, we wanted to delimit uh, the area that we will be scratching in this way, okay? For, okay. So we say, this is the area that we will be scratching and this will leave it white. So then it generates a little bit of design on our box. In order to delimit the area, I usually use a, um, a blue tape, which is not a blue painting tape, it's just a plastic tape, because it can actually be um, more, um, it, it can actually be um, stretched and make a really nice guideline. Okay. It's this. Perfect. Okay. So you, we can actually start doing this or do the, the, the or start the, doing the gold. There is no difference. For the gold, I use a bright gold. Okay. I shake it. Okay. And then I just uh, use the bright gold out of my. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for a, a brush. Okay, here is brush out of the box of the jar. Okay, just a little one more. Okay, and then you can just cover the. Make sure not to cover the. Uh, the your pink area, but just to be staying within the, within the to cover just the, the round the outside circle. And to go, make sure to cover all your your the dots that you put before, because sometimes the dots are not allowing the brush to go around everything. So make sure that you actually cover everything, so there are no whites after the the firing. Okay, you can continue to do this and to do all these dots, all the gemstone and the other gemstone. The other things that you can do is actually you can go back to your purple. Sorry. Go back to the, your portfolio, and you can put another layer of the uh, of the of the pink. If you wanted to shade them, make sure that you shade only one side and not both sides. So you wanted to put this way, so then the gemstone look to have like a little bit of dark side and and light side. So you can do this before or after you put the gold. You, I would just let one or the other dry, so then there is no risk of interference between the paint and, and, the, and the gold, okay? So you can do this on both of them, on both sides of the mod, this one and this one. So you can do the darken of the pink, and then you can circle, and then you can put the gold. Same here. You want to darken only one side, okay? Okay, you don't want it to darken the old things. Remember, there was you just flat again. Okay, this will give some depth to your gemstone. Okay. 
Okay, interesting. And then you can go with the with the goal. Okay. Okay. So now that the last step probably is dry, we can clean again because we didn't want to use the air dryer too long. Okay. And what we wanted to do is to do the scratch technique. So the scratch technique, I don't know if anybody ever used that already, is pretty much, you can do the scratch technique of any color, as soon as the color is dry. Uh, so you have to sponge the color, you let it dry. You can see when it's very opaque, it means it's dry. So I don't think it works with the open medium. It's, it, it works only with the closed medium. Uh, and when it's dry, then you actually use a wood tool. And with the wood tool, you scratch away the area that you wanted to, mm, to go back and be white or to go back and see the, the layer that's underneath because it can be done on different layers, not necessarily just on porcelain. Okay, so sometimes uh, mm, the pe some people actually put the plate in uh, the object with the scratch, uh, with the sponge color. In the in the in the kiln, let the let this heat for like a 200 degrees, and then take it out, and then in that way, you know that it's really dry, and you can scratch it. I usually leave, leave it a day, um, and then I come back the following day, and I don't have to go through the kiln process. But as uh, drier it is, better the, te the technique, the scratching technique comes because you can actually scratch very fine line and the color doesn't actually uh, pull away or something, okay? So to do the scratch technique, what I do, I usually have, uh, like in this case, we have a white. So I will take a, a, a mat and it's a white mat. So I will just put the color down. Oops. Same idea, I will actually use a, a water medium on the scratch technique because like I said, it dries much faster than any other medium. Okay, so especially because I don't have patience, so it will help. And I will just mix the color as it is. Okay, just water medium and, and powder. Okay, when it's there, okay, you can see that it's like your usual toothpaste consistency, a little bit thinner. If you want it to thinner, remember it's a water medium. So you actually have to have water available. Okay, and if you want it, you can clean or you can actually thin the color. <clears throat> and then with the sponge, okay, with the sponge, you actually sponge the color in the area that you want. In this case, we wanted to cover this area. So I actually have, sorry water okay and then i pick up and i will sponge it okay now it's very white it's white so i'm sure that it's very hard to see it so i will go very close to my mod okay and i will sponge everywhere until i get to the line and you can do the same everywhere okay you cover the whole area when you cover the whole area, you just sponge it. So you can get a uniform look, okay? And you actually let it dry completely. And to let it dry, it's very easy because it's opaque. I also usually try go somewhere else so I can use it as a finger to see that's dry. So I don't put my fingers where I'm supposed to paint them. So then I don't have fingerprint left and I will let it dry. Like I said, it takes a long time to dry like usually I leave it overnight or you can put them in the kiln, a little uh, shaky shaky and it will be dry, dry fast. Uh, so what I did, I actually prepare the, uh, this on a, different, on a different piece, which I let it dry since yesterday. And you can see it's very hard because it's white, but you can see that it's dry because I touch it and I don't see it. How do you, uh, uh, what's the scratch technique about? The scratch technique, it's very, very simple. You actually have your, and then you have a tool. 
and it's actually freehand. So everybody has to come up with a design in their, in their mind, or you can use a design as reference. And as you go, you actually create the design. Like for example, here, I can say this. It's very hard to see the white on white, I believe. So I don't know if you can actually catch it or not. But usually I scratch it and see because it's been it's been there for dry for a day. It's very easy to scratch. You can actually have very clean edges and actually very clean, very fine line. Make sure you take the color away. And usually I clean it this way. So you can actually see your your uh, scratched. Um, I don't know if it's possible to see it because like I said, it's white on white. Um, but we can see that maybe in the late in the and then you can continue and you can do it as as many as many. I I actually use um, tattoo design as inspiration for my scratching, but you can use any of. I usually ask my this my student. I will always say, think about when you don't have anything to do and you are doodling. Okay, that's what you wanted to do. Your doodling it can be something that you can do in your scratch technique, or you can actually find a pattern and a repetitive pattern, and that's what you can use in your scratch technique. Okay, and like I said, it can be done on any color. I particularly like the white because I found it that's very elegant but you can use it in any color. If you're doing any color, it's very effective right away. You don't have to do anything else. With the white, I always cover with the mother of pearl lusters because in that way, it is actually, um, uh, it's more effective, the look of, of the white. Uh, like the white white you want to see, if I put mother of pearl, the area that you actually scratch, there will be mother of pearl, while the, and um, the white mat will absorb the mother of pearl completely. So you will not see, uh, you will you will be able to see a, a, a more, a, a bigger effect because you will have the matte white on a shiny luster background. Okay, but this is the only time that I cover the, the sketch technique when I use white. If I use any other color, they're very effective as they, uh, as you see right away, I can I can see if I have any sample here. Sorry, this is a as a work in progress, so I don't. It's not, but I wanted you to just focus on the if you can on these little blue dots. See the blue dots. This is scratch technique on blue. You don't have to do anything else on top because the blue is actually already, it shows up already nicely on the white porcelain, okay? Sorry. Okay, so once we had that, and we finished and it dries and we did all the scratching on this area, we can pull away our blue tape. We can clean if we have any leftover. And the only thing that's left to do in this firing is actually the top part, if we wanted to put those little bubbles, okay? So we, same idea, we do a guideline, we go back and we actually go back, we, we get our chipping powder again, we put more chipping powder. Okay, we use our uh, wa wa water medium. We mix them. This time we don't want this chipping powder be to be very liquid because we wanted to build those little balls that we put on the top of the on the top of the drawing or the design okay so here we have them so same with the same tool we pick up something with we try to have the same amount okay and we just put the bones now one of the beautiful things so that you remember it will always uh, become a little smaller so if we wanted to put it, it will actually shrink a little bit in the fire. 
So make sure that you don't do very, very, I mean, things that we don't know, we don't even see. Okay. Uh, the beautiful things about chipping, chipping, non chipping off power is that he will actually settle during the firing and will actually round it himself. So if they're not very precise, they will be rounding in themselves during the firing. And this is the beautiful things about the non-ping non off power versus regular resist. Okay, here we go. And you continue with all of them. Okay. Try to keep the same distance so they look nice. And then I usually like to sit for one night and then I'm firing afterwards. And when you fire, that's what you have. See, you have the light, nice little dots and you can see how small they are compared to the one they put on on the previous. Uh, and, then, and then you have all your uh, beautiful uh, white white uh, scratch area, okay? The butterfly, you notice that we have, where we put uh, one layer of the resist versus two layers, one layer of luster, sorry, versus two layer of luster. You can actually see this, that is nice because it gives a different depth to the moth itself, just by having these two different, two different layer of luster versus the different layers of lasters, okay? And you can see our gemstone, are beautiful and they're actually golden and we can see all our dots. So what's missing now is we wanted to uh, give a little brighten this space, um, the, the chipping, the um, scratch, uh, the scratch area technique where we use the scratch area by using, by putting mother of pearl because it will just shine at the, as the last firing. And also we wanted to put a little tip of gold or bright gold on top of our uh, white dots. Also, sometimes I like to go back and and do my uh, my outlining on the gold around the gemstone again because sometimes with the when we put the gold, we actually cover some of the outlining. So it's nice to go back and actually make sure that they are very uh, clean uh, visible. Okay, so to do that, we can do the mother of pearls, and like I said, mother of pearls is only the one last that. I, I actually put use it with the, uh, with the brush. I have a brush that is only used for mother of pearl, or pearl, mother of pearl, so there is no contamination. Okay, and I can simply do this, maybe. Okay, and then you can actually put the mother of pearl. If you don't feel comfortable, you can put the. For, for the edges, you can put the blue tape back again, but that's actually the way they look. And I usually do crisscrosses because that's where you get the most effect. Okay. From the mother of pearl luster. Okay. Make sure that you get very Cover everything to the edge. Be more pre precise than what I am actually now, because it will be better. Okay, and then you have the old things. Okay, and this one, when you fire, you will see that it looks beautiful. And where we actually scratched, we can see the luster. And where we left our matte color, it will actually disappear completely because the matte color just sucks in the old luster and disappears. Okay, next we want to do some outlining. Oops, so we wanted to pick up my black color. with 
I usually I use any soil for the outlining. My pen. Test. Then what you do, you actually go back and do that, just the edges. So it will actually make sure that um, some of the edges were lost. Okay, so we want to go back and make sure that the edges are very visible. See how it changes completely. And you do that on all, all of that, okay? On both sides, because then it will bring back the, 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 the neatness of those. And the last things we want is go back and recuperate our uh, other bright gold. And you can actually just put the tip, so all this. So they will be very bright uh, when you fire. And that's pretty much and, um, the way they, to do the mod. But you can have um, floating the luster is beautiful and you can do it uh, for all your, your background and uh, on tiles and all this stuff. Don't, I, I never use luster for things that are related to food because they have a very, very low penetration in the porcelain. And you don't want uh, people to eat them while they are eating on their plates, so I will discourage you to use the uh, lasters on 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 food um, or on food pieces. Um, but for the decorative pieces like tiles, it's a magic. It's a very beautiful, or even the display plate or something or tray or something just something that you are you don't have, uh, you don't put any food and this is pretty much the end of the how we will look at the end after this will be the last firing we will have this they will get um this effect and also these other things they will have a little gold on top that will actually look uh, like the one that you have in your uh, uh i think in your study all right, I think um, this is uh, exactly, it, it takes a little longer because you have to go to the firing and you have to take, you have to take uh, time to actually dry, which I didn't actually do a lot, and time also to let the different medium to settle, especially when you do raise, uh, then I will actually, so, but other than that, these are the sequence of event, sequence of uh, firing that I will do uh, for, uh, for, for this piece for this piece. So if you have any question, I think I'm happy to answer questions. If you have any questions now, unmute yourself and uh, Paula will answer them for you. Thank you. Paula, Paula um, on the first fire, the, the pink gemstones, did you paint them in or was it with, um, was it with an erased product? This one, you mean? Okay, so yeah. okay, on the first fire, the the inside of the pink side, it's actually just a regular color that I mix with my um, closed medium or fat oil or whatever you wanted to use as soon as it's not open medium. And then the dots that I put here, I actually use, um, most of the time I use a non pink off powder uh, because to go through multiple firing without chipping off from the glaze. Okay. When you put the, the dots on those uh, that area, did you put the dots on the pink or just on the gold part? Oh, no, no, on the on the on the uh, on the outer circle. Uh, on the I'm outer circles. Okay. Yeah. If you look at here, maybe you can actually see more. There are okay, yes, I can see it better. 
the outer circle, yes. Um, on the pink side, I usually don't put them. At the most, if I really wanted to go crazy, um, I'm looking, okay, here it is. So when I do the white, when I do the white here, I usually pick up a little and I put like a dot on the opposite side of where I did the dark, just to brighten up. But this is as much as I will go sometime. Okay. But the, the, the relief dots are on the outside, not on the pink side. Okay. Okay. Good. I had a question. I, am, I was wondering if you can use turpentine or mineral spirits to clean the plate once you have, uh, after you've tried to wipe off the um, luster that's drizzled over in the area you don't want it. Can you use turpentine or mineral oils instead of the acetone? I don't like acetone. Oh yeah, okay. Then I will go for the alcohol. Alcohol? Right. And the reason the reason why I am not inclined, I use a turpentine, maybe turpentine, but definitely mineral, no. The mineral oil has the tendency to run. Well, not it's, the oil, but the mineral spirits has the, it. I, I, okay, it's, the, the only thing that I like about the acetone, and you can use anything else, is that it dries really very fast. So anything that dries fast is good. Turpentine is also good if you are okay with turpentine, as because, uh, the only thing is that you want it to dry and make sure that you control the area where uh, you want to clean and you want to make sure that you control the area where you're cleaning. So you don't want any cleaner that doesn't that runs into. So mineral oil doesn't work. You're right. Mineral spirit possible. I never use mineral spirit. So I can answer that question. Turpentine is good as soon as you dry, as soon as you control where the turpentine goes. Yes. And you recommend a good turpentine that doesn't uh, smell so strong? Um, I don't know. There are, um, I, I like the smell of turpentine. So I am the worst person to ask this question. Um, I usually use, a, a, a mig, let me go and get it. Second. I usually use a Winton, Winston. Windsor and neuter. Okay, good. But um, which is um, a little smelly, but it's not as the one from Home Depot. Um, the um, the it's it's almost a waste to use it to clean it because it's very expensive. Uh, there is actually a known uh, a known uh, smelly turpentine uh, that is sold uh, in Europe. And you can order that. It's just getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. I think um, Hello, Hello, um, Hello Holland actually, Hello Holland actually carries that. The non smelly, non odorless turpentine. Sorry. And if you need the information, I can send um, Suzanne the link for the product. Oh, thank you. Can we use raised paste for raised gold instead of the chipping powder to make those balls? Um, I think that the reason the raised paste uh, they might not be um, enough, and then if you enough uh, to give you that consistency, the the, the thickness. Uh, and my my worry is that they will actually chip off in the fire. So that's why I use the non chip off. The non chip off, the non ping off, because it's actually the only one that never, never chipped off for me. I am worried that as as you grow in thickness, uh, there is a higher possibility of coming off during the fire or even after the fire, and definitely they don't tolerate multiple firing. I my experience. And where do we get the chip off powder? The chip off, the non ping off. I'm just confused. The non ping off, um, you actually, I actually also buy from this, uh, uh, from Held of uh, Holland. Uh, when I was in Tybee Island at the last convention, um, Suzanne, I, this, this past year, 
September. Uh, Mary uh, Rose Borges had, had, um, was carrying that. Oh, good. So I don't know if you can get it through Rose, or I can also send the information to uh, to Susanna where to get it. Uh, it's called Nomping Golf Powder. It's white, and you can also mix it with color, so you can actually make bowl, little balls or nothing with, with color. The beauty of this one is that it rounds inside, it rounds during the firing. So you always have really nice balls and uh, and he actually tolerates the firing. Um, also versus other other race paste, uh, this one is glossy, it's shiny. So if you wanted to put gold on top or any other things on top, it is shiny, it doesn't turn matte. Mm, okay. And finally, one more question, and then I'll let others. Uh, where do you get anise oil? I see Anna gets it from cake decorating shops, but is that where we find anise oil? Um, I think almost everybody carries the anise oil, I will say. Right? Well, I, I looked at Maryland, China, and they didn't have it. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll take it back. Um, oh, Maryland, China sells something called outlining oil. So you can use the outlining medium. Whatever Maryland China calls outlining medium is actually good. It's just synthetic instead of natural. Um, I actually buy most of my product, like I said, um, uh, by uh, out of out of aggregate. I think uh, Jimmy has any soy. Okay, I'll try it. Uh, ask Jim. Ask Lisa. Uh, non ask Jimmy. Ask Lisa. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. As, uh, I think they actually, they might have it because I think when I went to that class with them, I think that's where we got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But this has been wonderful. If you don't find them, you can always, uh, uh, Suzanne knows where to find me and I'd be happy to either um, buy when I go home or um, give you the contact information where you can find these products. Thank you. I, I think very sometimes that we think that the problem is to come from Europe, but at the end of the day, I found that they're now more expensive than what we buy here, even with the shipping. Okay. Well, Paola, this was an absolutely wonderful demonstration today. And thank you for donating your time and your talents uh, for iPad um, artists and teachers. And I will go back many times and enjoy this. It's been, been a spectacular lesson so um unless we have any other questions i'll say thank you and uh see you soon thank you thank you very much yes thank um, you always, always here if you need it thank you very much thank okay. you